Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I know exactly what you're thinking. You're saying, Gary, what is that you are wearing around your neck? What I have here is an e-ink display built with a Raspberry Pi Pico, basically. That's the RP2040 processor and all the stuff that you get on it. So you can create badges for uh, conferences and much, much more. And so today I want to look at the Badger 2040, as it's called, and tell you all about it. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so here is the uh, Badger 2040, and it's from the company uh, Pimeroni, which you, is a UK company. As far as I understand, they do ship worldwide. So what have you basically got? You've got an e-ink display here, and then it's all built onto a Raspberry Pi Pico type board. If you buy the kit, you can actually get this kind of little battery, it means it runs in the battery, but there's basically a Raspberry Pi 2040 there. We'll talk more about the back in a moment. Of course, the great thing about e-ink displays is that they take no power. So once you've actually set a display, that's it, you can take away the power, the power, the display remains the same. And of course, the idea being that this is called the Badger because it would be great to use for badges at uh, expos and conferences and so on. And if you scroll down here through the menus, this is a demo app that they put on it for you. And we hit this button here, look, there are one, two, three, four, five buttons that you can all program, of course. We hit the badge button. So you imagine you're at some kind of conference and there you go, once you've set that, you can take the power away. And in fact, there's a little place here that you can put it for around your neck, a little band you can get around a lanyard or whatever they call it around your neck. Uh, you can get one of those in the kit as well if you buy it. So look, I've got my little badge, Gary explains, uh, and so on. Of course, that's now e-ink, so it doesn't change, doesn't need refreshing at all. So as I said, you get these five buttons around the edges um, and you can program this basically to do whatever you want. Of course, it doesn't have to be just e-ink in the sense that, you know, it's um, something that doesn't get updated. I, I read about one person on the internet that was using one of these to monitor the temperature in a tropical fish tank and they kept it up to an I squared C temperature sensor. And then of course this is can be updated, uh, you know, once a minute, once every half hour or something like that with the current temperature. So that was a really good way. You're basically getting a, a pie Pico, Raspberry Pi Pico with a built-in display so you can actually start displaying all kinds of uh, interesting information. So that was the badge. You can also display images. Look here. And I've customized all these because it's very easy to customize this demo that they give you. Just put some images in the right directories uh, and it all kind of works. So if you want to go back, if you do get one of these you're using the demo, you press A and C together and that takes you back to uh, the main menu. They've also shown you could use it as a listing app so that you can know you can actually you know what your shopping list as you go out uh, what do you need to go and buy and you can kind of tick uh, you can find the right bit that you want to find and then scroll up and down and tick it once you found uh, the item that you were trying to buy that kind of stuff. they even show an ebook of course because kindle of course uh, it uses e-ink displays so it would be good if you could use this tiny display as well uh, as an e-ink display which you can of course so uh, that was badge image list let's go up one more yeah ebook there you go and they show you you can put some uh, ebook uh, text on there so basically anything you think you can do with a display particularly a display that doesn't need to be powered on all the time a display that won't take any power while you're not updating it and then you might want to update it you know every few minutes every few hours uh, that's a great way a power saving way and actually you do get the last thing that you wanted to put on the screen uh, always uh, on display. So let's just flip it over because we did talk briefly about that. So what have you got here on the back? So basically this uh, Velcro pad came with the kit. I stuck it on there so I could stick the battery on there. What have you got? The connector here for the battery. Okay, that comes as part of it. And of course, this little thing here is the connector to the uh, e-ink display, USB-C connector. So that's different if you're using a Raspberry Pi Pico. Now we're on USB-C, so actually that makes it a good idea for getting one of these rather than just a standard Raspberry Pi Pico if you wanted to use a USB-C. Then here in the corner, there's one of these uh, quick slash 
a stemmer connector. It's basically a standard connector that is I squared C. So you've got ground volts and uh, ground and then five volts, or is it 3.3 volts? Uh, and then whatever the I, two I squared C pins, and these are the standard connectors. You can get lots of different modules and sensors that plug into there, so you can connect up. And then over here on the left, you can see there are some debug pins which you could solder. There's no holes there, so you could solder some connectors onto here. You've basically got three volts, uh, two lots of ground, and then you've got uh, I squared C connectors, um, and you've also got the serial connectors there. So you can get some output uh, out from this device. So there you go, a very, very simple idea. Basically, a Raspberry Pi uh, chip, the RP2040, hence the name Badger2040, stuck on an e-ink display with the possibility of adding your own uh, battery to it. Look at that. And there you have it. So whatever you wanted to, to do, whatever you wanted to play around with, you can get it out here on the display. So I think this is a really, really clever idea and lots and lots of uses uh, for it. Uh, this code gener QR generator, that's got a QR code that you can scan in to find out more about the product. I bought this with my own money. This is not a sponsored video in any way because I was interested to see it myself and I think it's a pretty good uh, little thing. So what we'll do now is we'll just quickly head over to the desktop and just have a look at how you can just write a very simple program for it using MicroPython, very similar to the Raspberry Pi Pico. And then I think we'll call it a wrap. Okay, so here's our first little program inside of Thony. Of course, I am assuming that you're used to or you've watched videos about how to program a normal Raspberry Pi Pico with MicroPython. This is showing you the specifics that are related to the Badger 2040. So there is a special uh, library you can import, Badger 2040, that gives you access to things like the e-ink display, the LED, the buttons, and so on. And so what you do is you just say Badger is equal to Badger 2040. Badger 2040, and that now creates this Badger uh, variable here, and you are able to then access the functions. And all we're going to do is blink an LED. So just a simple while loop that goes round and round forever. What do we do? Badger.LED255. Now, you're allowed to use different intensities. So it's not just on off. 255 means it's brightest intensity. Rough bit of testing on my part. Down to about 50 is just about visible. As you get lower and lower, it's almost the same as being off, depending on the lighting circumstances, so on. But 255 will make it bright. Then you sleep for one second. Then you do set it to actually zero, so that turns it off. Then you sleep for one second, and then it goes around in a loop. And of course, all that's going to do is flash the LED. Now on this next program, I want to look at how you access the e-ink display. So again, you need to do the Badger stuff. And then the first line we've got here is badger.update speed. Now because it's an e-ink display, it's not like an LED or an LCD display or an OLED display, which uh, basically if the pixel isn't lit, it just switches off. Or an e-ink display, of course, once you set something on the screen, it stays there. And so to change the screen, you kind of need to go through this kind of like etch a sketch kind of refresh that kind of shakes all the, the e ink around until you can kind of get your picture on there again. And there's different speeds, and different speeds uh, clear the quality of the screen uh, differently. The slowest one at zero will have a really, really good clean of the screen, and anything new you put on there will be nice and sharp. Uh, and you can go all the way up to three, which is a, the turbo mode. I found two is kind of usable if you're kind of having any applications that are interactive. If you're just doing something like a badge or something that updates uh, you know, every hour, then you can leave it on zero because it doesn't matter how long the screen takes to display. So basically what you do is you say pen, that basically means you're writing on the screen, color zero is black because you've only got black and white. Uh, text, you basically say where you want to put it, uh, X and Y coordinates, and I'm putting in here, hello badger. And then once you've got your screen updated, you could put other things on here, you could draw things, there are rectangle and line functions, you can call all the documentation is available uh, on the relevant website, and I'll leave a link in the description below. You then say update, and that causes the display to actually be updated. So it says when you're ready, let's do the update, because it's an e-ink display, and the update does take some time. Then we're going to sleep for five seconds, then what we're going to do is we're going to change the pen to 15, which means white, 
and we do clear and clear by automatically just creates the, a black a blank rectangle a white one in this case across the whole screen so basically clears the screen we don't need to update at this point because you're kind of just updating what's in the memory and then we can go back to having a black pen again and we can write goodbye badger having originally written hello badger and then we can call update and then we will see that actually the new text is written on the screen okay let's give it a run and see what it looks like Now this final program, I'm not gonna go through all the intricacies of it. I've derived this code from a, a guy called Martin Fitzpatrick who has a demo of this for a different type of microcontroller, but using Python. So I've kind of adapted it from there and made it work on the Badger uh, 2040. I've made the update speed now three, which is the turbo mode. Okay, all this is basically how you manipulate a 3D uh, triangle. Okay, and the bottom line is, is you define this uh, triangle. Okay, and then we just run the simulation. And what I've got here is I'm basically clearing the screen between every uh, frame and I'm changing the pen back to black and then we draw the lines that you need to draw to do this rotation and it just runs. The point I wanted to show is, is that it's actually quite a sophisticated uh, little display. It's quite a sophisticated, obviously, microprocessor and it will do these 3D cubes. Uh, uh, but of course, it's not the same as if you're using an, an OLED display or something like that. I'll do another video. I've got another piece of equipment I want to review doing the same thing on an OLED display you'll see the difference but here you can see that this display is actually quite capable of doing quite a few things okay that's it i hope you enjoyed my look at the badger 2040 as i said not a sponsored video in any way whatsoever i pay for this with my own money okay if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up if you like these kind of videos then please do subscribe to the channel don't forget you can follow me on twitter at gary explains and i also have a monthly newsletter go to garyexplains.com type in your email address you won't get any spam but you will get the newsletter okay that's it i'll see you in the next one